afternoon everybody. Colleagues on the dais, Dr. J.K. Jena, Deputy Director General, Visiri Science, Dr. Tripathi, Deputy Director General, Animal Science, Dr. Frank, Nanshe, University of Melbourne, the other colleagues from Australia, University of Melbourne, <coughs> Dr. Bhatta, who is the director of this prestigious institute, two earlier directors, my other director colleagues from other Asian institutes, colleagues from Indian Institute of Science, maybe some participants in this workshop, colleagues from this institute and other institutes. At the outset, let me congratulate Dr. Bhatta and other colleagues of the institute for inauguration of two of the facilities for furthering research at this institute. My heartiest congratulations to all of you who are from the Institute in this uh, Silver Jubilee year as a part of celebration and holding this particular workshop on uh, mitigation technology for heat, heat stress in farm animals being organized, which, is, which has been organized along with the University of Melbourne and colleagues are here supporting, participating and guiding. <coughs> so thanks to Frank and other colleagues for enabling this. Mention was made that uh, we facilitated this. Without that, nothing happens because the system has to be facilitated at, at some point. Otherwise, you don't see the pace at which things happen. Would happen otherwise if you don't really engage yourself. So first of all, thanks to your own director Dr. Bhatta for thinking about it, initiating it and also pursuing it vigorously. Without pursuing, nothing happens. So that he has done elaborately and uh, in a very dedicated fashion. Dr. Bhatta, congratulations and thanks for everything. If you don't cry, you don't get it, anything and he cries. And in fact, I would not have come here without his persuasion. Given my other uh, responsibilities and uh, engagements at a higher level, which were there, I had to really request very specifically to come over to this place. And also there is another program and Dr. Bhatta is a bit selfish. So he says, you can spend as much time here. So don't worry for the other program. <laughs> so, so that's the kind of in fact, a zeal and uh, I would not say selfish motives, but then that's the kind of interest he has in institute matters. And institute matters a lot to him. And that is what is very evident. So time is limiting. We are exactly one hour late. So I don't want to give you a long lecture. I have been coming to this institute how many times? Dr. Bhatta, do you have any account of my visit to this institute? Maybe 10 times? Maybe more than that. And officially, officially might have come not less than eight, uh, 6 to 8 times to this institute. And uh, what we have actually planned for this institute is quite big. The Indian Council of Agriculture Research for its uh, various uh, aspects of 
activities need support of this institute enormously. But given the support and the dimension of research that we want, we have not been able to build this institute accordingly. And in the very first visit of mine and subsequently Dr. Jena and myself, we have been discussing how to really promote this institute as an institute of excellence, not just nationally for ICR, but at the global level, so that it is visible as a global center of excellence on animal physiology and nutrition. The buildings, facilities, infrastructures are required, essentially required. So in that direction, you know, it's not a question of managing money from here and there. Once you decide that you have, you have a goal that you need to build this institution as a global institution of repute and a center of excellence, obviously the rest of the things follow. So given that, so we decided that there has to be some good facility, I would not say world class, good facilities to do that kind of research, frontline research, frontier area research, so that you build your reputation globally. It is not to say that you, have, you don't have any global reputation. You have already built some reputation. But I think we have to go beyond uh, you know, the label that we are dwelling at this point in time. And to go beyond, certainly infrastructure and facilities are important. In that context, we decided that it, these facilities should be here. And we must arrange funds from whatever sources it is. And uh, today, we have these facilities now available. But Dr. Bhatta, you should actually finish it up and uh, not more than six months you should take you know, to have these <coughs> facilities running. You have animals there under heat stress when we come next time and you have primary data already collected and you have wonderful inferences drawn based on contrasting breed behavior and uh, not just one or two breeds to compare but a set of breeds from different agroecologies and climatic situations studied here. Our nature provides quite a bit of diversity, not only in terms of breeds, but also breeds in relation to their agroclimate. And once you bring them here, put them under specific conditions, and you have to simulate the, the conditions which is in which they grow naturally. But then if you confine to a particular chamber, uh, in contrast to the natural uh, you know, or kind of uh, uh, foraging. Uh, so, so obviously there will be a difference, and you have to build, you know, that kind of gradient situation so that you know the nature, the way it builds, the kind of stress you have to simulate, and a whole lot of studies have to again happen to actually build that kind of situation to study and see what the, what can happen in nature and what can. Uh, you study here, <coughs> certain changes might be different than gradual changes that we know very much. So, so a set of uh, breeds from contrasting agroecologies and appropriating the kind of situations which are existing in those ecologies and simulating uh, to the best possible uh, in a manner. So, so those kind of information should be we should be able to generate, you know, uh, not just one or two scientists or four or five scientists, or institute, all the scientists should be engaged, uh, you know, uh, in this activity uh, in a manner, uh, you know, uh, mention has made multidisciplinary uh, research, and, uh, you know, uh, our research studies and the institutions have been designed in such a way that you have multidisciplinary scientists in one institute, under one umbrella. And you can have others from other institutions in a collaborative fashion invited here. And when we have a center of excellence, obviously, that's the objective. And bring in people from other institutes, the students from other uh, you know, backgrounds, and they are coming here and studying. And that kind of, and you have to actually be a thinker, a thought leader. And how do you become a thought leader in the area of animal physiology and nutrition, nationally and globally? And that is what you have to build. Dr. Bhatta, the youngsters, the young, young scientists who are joining, you have to inspire them, encourage them, train them, 
and fold them and then you know uh, they would actually be building the tomorrow's leaders they will be tomorrow's leaders so that's what actually should be the objective and they should be from the very beginning engaged in these uh, kind of activities and uh, Dr. Jena did mention about the climate change and the greenhouse gas emissions and the nutrition association of this and uh, the way uh, the global uh, you know, or, you know, studies have been revealing that you know, these huge animal populations and polluting the environment and how do we really uh, you know, uh, address those. Uh, so obviously the kind of population that we have, there are millions of populations and then emissions you know, quite high. So, uh, so there is another uh, area, and you have some uh, methylogen uh, inhibitors already in the uh, nutrient system, uh, supplement system that you have already identified. But there is more to do. It's not just identifying uh, whether uh, tamarind uh, or its, uh, you know, kind of some of its uh, components can build, uh, you know, that kind of situation and uh, inhibit the methanogens so, so that your uh, greenhouse gas emissions, particularly methane, is inhibited and uh, I know emission is reduced. But I think we have to go beyond that. Uh, you know, uh, uh, studying the methanogens, the particularly the whole uh, microbiome, uh, uh, in case of gut, uh, and uh, you know, in different uh, you know, breeds, uh, uh, and uh, how they really behave. Uh, not that uh, every breed uh, you know, uh, um, emitting uh, methane at the same rate, uh, and uh, the feed system, variety of diversity of feed system that we have, whether it is neem, whether it is uh, neem, uh, you know, on neem leaves which are fed uh, to the goats, uh, or uh, the uh, you know, or, uh, the the moringa leaves, or other leaf systems, and uh, you know, uh, other feed systems. How do they really concentrate? How do they really come? Uh, come? I mean, we haven't really understood uh, this whole thing scenario properly uh, as of now. Uh, you might have done quite a bit of studies already, but there will be large number of gaps, not only nationally but globally. So, so, so I am sure uh, with these uh, facilities, uh, uh, this is one aspect I was, uh, you know, there are several other layers to this. You know, we have developed several biofortified varieties. We say it's enriched for zinc, enriched for iron, enriched for pro-vitamin A and so on and so forth and protein. And uh, what would be the bioavailability and how uh, you know, oh, efficiently the animals are able to utilize and, uh, and so how do we really extrapolate that to human and uh, once we are convinced that a large part of it, the iron or the, for instance the zinc that we have enriched, they are available, uh, they are not really bound and unavailable formats, they are there but they have uh, no actual use. Uh, so once we study an animal system certainly we should be able to extrapolate to human and we can have uh, you know some studies which human conducted subsequently. So these uh, varieties uh, and even the diversified food system this country has, you know, uh, we haven't really studied much. They were all studied, uh, you know, uh, uh, in ancient times, uh, you know, based on observations. Uh, you know, you feed to human being and then see the impacts, and based on that, these observations are all noted down, and then they are being passed on and no elaborate studies. I had a discussion with a colleague in uh, All India Institute of uh, Medical Science in Delhi and uh, to study that some of these rice varieties which are actually uh, said to be having uh, low glycemic index. Uh, you know, the kind of uh, studies that we do, uh, the Australian uh, colleagues have developed a machine that, uh, you know, using different enzymes, enzyme combinations, you can see what is the glycemic index. Uh, uh, of the from different uh, you know rice varieties, for instance, and we have one machine uh, in the country available now. Another machine has also come um, in the Erie Center, uh, which has been established in Banaras. And uh, why do we think to utilize that? Well, the animal models, rat models, uh, can be utilized very effectively to study. So, building this institute as a holistic institute to study all this, and which would be certainly useful for uh, you know human systems subsequently. And starting from plants and uh, you know uh, different, uh, I cited example of rice, but there could be many others. Uh, you know, plant extracts, for instance, karela or jamun, and their extracts and the seed extracts, and how they, they do really impact with regard to uh, you know whether you know uh, 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 absorption or excretion of sugar and uh, you know sugar thrown out uh, through uh, you know your uh, urinary system. You know, there are medicines discovered now. You know, you're being utilized now, uh, you know, to do that. 
So based on this uh, physiology and you know, I don't think we are actually studying all this here, but holistically can we really expand our activities in years to come and build this institution, you know, uh, we not only just confining to study heat stress, today's con uh, context is uh, studying, uh, you know, developing uh, technologies, uh, you know, uh, mitigation technologies for heat stress uh, in case of farm um, animals. And that should be a you know, kind of one uh, focused aspect of uh, this uh, you know, uh, whole gamut of issues which I am uh, you know, putting before, placing before you. But sky is the limit. I think the nutrition uh, is a very strong component of your total mandate. And I am sure there will be plenty of opportunities for you to work on. Uh, you know, we talk of a field system, Dr. Zena did mention that how costly that the field system is as an input. And the poultry industry, for instance, a need substitute for maize, whether it is soybean or some other alternatives in the form of millets, for instance, and supplementation, nutrient supplementation. And uh, you have been working on these aspects. And for cattle, for instance, and you know your own study how the uh, nutrient supplementation in cattle can eliminate infertility, uh, repeat breeding, and a whole lot of other problems that can be eliminated and addressed through uh, nutrient supplementation. Uh, so similar situation can happen on others and we, the focus is now enhancing milk yield. How do we really do this? And so, so sky is the limit in the field of nutrition and similarly in heat stress and you have identified some biomarkers. I was going through your, this document which was released and several, uh, you know, kind of biomarkers you describe. But, uh, you know, that is one level of study that HSV-70 or uh, something else, you know, operates an expression different, uh, differs between two, uh, one tolerant and the other susceptible. But going beyond this, how is it that HSP-70 expression is controlled? Whether it is epigenetically controlled and whether some other genetic factors are involved in this expression. And obviously there will be some studies already going to get deeper insights globally. And we should be able to elaborate this. The going beyond HSP-70, and uh, uh, there are other biomarkers, and that could be, uh, you know, hidden to uh, unknown uh, ones which are yet to be discovered. And I'm sure whether it is, uh, you know, his own modifications, whether it is the small RNA engagement there, or whether it is methylation of the DNA itself, and uh, you know, that could be anyone. And we know under heat stress how the mobile elements move. And mobile elements, their movement mediated through methylation and demethylation processes. And I'm sure this institute can delve deeper inside and then see not only this, even the production process. And uh, you know, a whole lot of areas uh, would be opened up and these facilities you know, available with you. And if you can, you know, that's what I say, your thinking and mind would be the limit. Uh, how best or what extent you can think, that is the actually the limit. And uh, given the facility, uh, uh, you know, of course you have to do in a focused manner so that you go, go deeper, uh, not superficially touching here and there, not contributing, uh, you know, uh, effectively. So friends, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure this facility would uh, go a long way uh, in uh, meeting your needs. Uh, and I'm sure, and that's what we are planning in this EFC, uh, Dr. Tripathi, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, was, uh, you know, talking about briefly, uh, though he didn't uh, mention elaborate because of positive time, he left uh, time for me. I have taken more time than what is required. Uh, you know, we would certainly, in this EFC, Dr. Bhatta, would build this institution further and build more facilities. I was asking the engineer whether we can go vertical because space is a constraint here. Can we grow, go, go, go vertical? But he was telling the soil is slushy and a uh, few feet down there is a water layer and uh, groundwater. So you can't uh, have uh, multi-story buildings, <coughs> too high buildings here. So, but then uh, you, we need to have more buildings, more facilities and we will see how to really build and have more people. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the vacancies are filled up and that is what we will actually target and don't require too many regular people. You can have uh, new programs, global programs with Australia, with Germany, with others and you have started something. So global expertise anywhere we can collaborate with and then gain from their expertise and their experience through collaboration and in the process build 
the, our own activities and in the process also build that kind of science in frontier areas, advance the frontiers of science in process. And we should be able to do that. And through your research fellows, your research assistants, and uh, you know uh, other uh, you know kind of staff, and uh, you know uh, for instance data analytics, you would require that kind of data analysis uh, to have that kind of inferences drawn. Uh, the data which is already available uh, based on the studies uh, at different institutions, you know that can be uh, the you know starting point uh, for understanding the heat stress. The impacts on different breeds of goats, for instance. Uh, you know, you have, uh, you know, uh, camel, for instance, uh, you know, Nubra Valley. Uh, you know, Dave, yesterday I was discussing with somebody the double hump camel. You know, uh, how in minus, uh, you know, 20 degree centigrade temperature, the double hump camel performs as compared to the single hump camel uh, in in Rajasthan desert. So you have all kinds of even even your uh, you know goats. So you have all kinds of diversity in this country. And that provides enormous opportunity for us to take a leadership position globally and provide new science uh, and develop new technologies for mitigation. That is the purpose of this particular workshop. And uh, as we go along, we would certainly be, uh, you know, uh, looking into it uh, impassionately and, uh, uh, and delving deeper and uh, having a deeper dive uh, into all these, uh, you know, issues. Uh, uh, so without taking more time, I uh, am sure that under uh, the leadership of your uh, uh, dynamic director and uh, also our new DDG, Dr. Tripathi, uh, who is also quite, uh, uh, you know, involved uh, and determined uh, to work, uh, you know, in the direction of taking this division to newer heights. Uh, we have many challenges and I am sure the new DDG uh, would uh, remain involved and engaged uh, with this institute and create additional facilities so that not only we meet the requirements of ICAR as I briefly described in various aspects uh, you know, of it, but also uh, providing service to uh, other institutions uh, you know, of the country uh, and to build this institution as a global institution of repute and a global center of excellence uh, in the area of animal nutrition and physiology. And I'm sure there has to be a blueprint prepared within six months, not only these two facilities, with all animals, 7,000 animals you said you can keep there, and put as many animals as possible, design experiments as many as possible in six months, and develop a blueprint to build this institution as a global institution of uh, you know, substance and uh, excellence. And that blueprint should be there in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, EFC. When I joined at uh, Sierra Rai Katak, that's what I planned. I said, if I have to build this institution which is lagging 50 years behind, I need at least investment. So that is also, and create infrastructure, and build programs. And unless there are programs, obviously you can't have that kind of publication coming out. And then that kind of material coming out. Now you have material giving 8 to 10 tons, 11 tons per hectare yield rice varieties which have been developed by the institute in this five years uh, time. Uh, you know, which was, uh, you know, initiated at that time when I joined. So, that kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, target, which are difficult targets we have to set before us uh, to move in that direction in a determined fashion. And I'm sure we should be able to do that. So, with these words, I once again congratulate uh, the colleagues from this institute, everyone, uh, this Silver Jubilee year, and uh, for all your achievements. And I'm sure you'll be doing much better as you go along. And uh, ICAR will be there to support you, to handhold you, to backstop you in whatever format it is required. And uh, we, this is our interest and selfish motive that we have to build this institution for the sake of ICAR, for the sake of the country, and uh, you know, so that we uh, also get recognized in the process. So wish you all the very best in your endeavors. Congratulations once again uh, for everything that you have done and for the new facilities. And thank you once again for inviting me and giving this opportunity, Dr. Vanda. All the best. And, uh, uh, you know, I wish this works out a grand success.